Warm welcome to M59. My name is Leon Els. We pray that you will have a blessed time just listening to the message. Secure the bunker. Now, last week we spoke on the fact that God has given us a place of safety and security. And I believe that God wants to bring us from where we are in terms of living our life as a Christian, as a believer, to deeper dimensions. Because he's not just called us to be safe, he's called us to be a warrior. And that's kind of just the opposite. Now, the bunker doors is to secure a place of safety, but can also be a place of vulnerability. In other words, when we have a bunker, uh, just to bring that into the physical world, the only weak place spot in that old bunker would be the entrance. That which allows place or, or uh, someone to enter into this place of safety, that is a vulnerable place. You know, when while I was busy preparing this, uh, there's so many things that, that came to mind in terms of scriptures and what I believe God wants to instill in us in the time to come. Just with this one mere statement, God brings, wants to bring us into a place of security and safety. But you see, His hand is open for us to enter in. It is our choice if we want to make use of the facility to come into His presence. And you know, I've been overwhelmed again through the course of this week with that one portion in the scriptures that says narrow is the way. And this gate is so narrow that few will find it. And I'm beginning to think, Lord, what I need to do is to get as close as I can to you so that your spirit will guide me and lead me. I cannot stand on religion or the teachings of man. I need the spiritual insight of the Holy Spirit. This is why what we do on a continual basis on the Sabbath, when I bring teaching, it is really to give you the keys to those places where God has all in store for you and for, for I, so that we would become stronger in what God has for us. Pay attention to where the vulnerabilities are. You know, this is the main thing, isn't it? If you want to overcome, you first need to understand what your weaknesses is. Once you know that, you can build the structure. You can begin to strengthen you. If you know that you've got a used to be an alcoholic, do you think it is good for you to ignore the fact when people invite you into a bar and big parties where it's really just about drink? Of course not. You would you would try to get by these or not to visit these places purely because of the weakness that you have and when you know that you can steer away from the places that could bring you into temptation and this is what life is know your weaknesses pay attention to where the vulnerabilities are not only yours but also that which we are busy doing ambassadors of the messiah and remember that's a phrase we used last week very importantly Ambassadors of the Messiah have security clearance to be in the bunker. So if you are an ambassador of the Lord, if you are a believer, if you're part of the body of Christ, God says, here's the open invitation. You have a pass to enter into my safety. He's actually inviting us in because God wants us under his wings for us to be encouraged and be strengthened by that. But you see, ambassadors of the Messiah also have the responsibility to secure against unauthorized attempts to enter. In other words, once I am in the bunker or have access to the bunker, I need to be careful that I also guard the door. You know, the word of God is very clear that uh, the enemy fights. He's only got one way. Remember the teaching on the helm of salvation? There's only one way, and that's the mind. And he wants to play mind games with us. He wants to tell us certain things so that he can weaken us by the stories that he tells us. Now, he can try, but if you are in relationship with the Lord, the Holy Spirit will bring you that, help you to guard the vulnerability in your mind. 
And I believe that if ever there was a time that we need to strengthen up as Christians, it is now. Things are not getting better out there. Darkness is really getting darker and darker. But here's the thing. The darker it is out there, the more bright the light is. You can light a candle in darkness and it can be seen for miles. Just be the ca candle in darkness. God has called us exactly for that. So ambassadors of the Messiah also have responsibilities to secure these places. And we're going to look at that. Let's read from the scripture in 2 Peter chapter 3 and, and then verse 17. To me, this is a, a great warning. He says, therefore, let me warn you, beloved, knowing these things beforehand, be on your guard so that you are not carried away by the error of unprincipled men who distort doctrine and fall from your own steadfastness of mind, knowledge, truth, and faith. And here's the thing. There's a few scriptures to this, to this effect that says, when you think you are standing, you might be falling. It happens so gradually that the enemy have you to begin to slide down the slope that you hardly notice it. You see, as a believer, he will never make you fall suddenly because we, he knows that that will wake us up. But if he can deteriorate you over time, make you to become accustomed to certain things. You know, we've seen this and I've spoken to a few ministers over the last few, couple of months. The amazing thing is how many people have not gone back to church after lockdown. It is absolutely unbelievable. So what is the problem then? Why is it? If it was good enough in the beginning, prior, why can it not be done now? And more so, because we know that we need to rely on God for health. But this is scriptural. He says, therefore, let me warn you, beloved, knowing these things, that temptation will come your way. This is what he says there. Be on your guard so that you are not carried away by the error of, of unprincipled men who distort doctrine. And how will you know when something is falsified if you don't know what the true article is? You only know what is false when you know what the real thing is. And if you begin to guide, uh, slide away from the word of God, you will not even recognize the false doctrines. There are so many doctrines around today. So many preachers on a telly with huge teaching. You know what amazes me? I listen to the teachings of the apostles and I find that they use the scriptures. Nowadays, you've got these ministers rising up with their version of what God meant to say. And you know, because it is soft on the ear, people fall for it because it's also comfortable. So if anything, I believe that God wants to have us to come into the bunker of his safety, knowing what he wants from us. Do you know what God has in store for you? Well, you'll never know unless you ask him about it. Four things to guard against in staying secure. If you want to stay secure there's four things that we need to look at and we're just quickly going to go through it uh, as quickly as i can uh, you'd have the notes available anyway so it'll be good for you to follow up a well-known scripture in second chronicles 7 14. if my own people i love this translation if my own people will humbly pray and turn back to me and stop sinning then I will answer them from heaven and I will forgive them and make them their land fertile once again man when I read this I broke up think about it God says he wants to bless us and then he says these things need to be done before this can happen we you'll see what it means at the end the first thing I want to highlight is pride or self-centeredness. 
This is the one thing that will keep us away from the kingdom of God. Pride. That is what made the enemy to fall. Pride it. You see, God comes and he speaks to the nation here and he says, will humbly come to me. Humble. You see, God hates pride. And when he says we need to humbly come, you cannot be humble and proud. So in other words, we need to investigate. Lord, is there something in me that God hates? Very often he talks about pride. And our pride actually takes us away from God's plan and will in our lives. Because, you know, we become proudful and do the things that I want to do. And not necessarily what the Lord wants me to do. Proverbs 8, verse 13. He says, if you respect the Lord, that word respect also is to fear the Lord. To have reverence for the Lord. If you respect the Lord, you also will hate evil. It is wise to hate pride and bragging, evil ways and lies. Because God says this is what he hates. And I'm saying, Lord, how often do, do we find ourselves in place or in a place where pride kind of fill our heart? And if pride comes in and being humble goes out, it's displeasing to God. How can you tell if you have a pride problem? Now, I just wrote down a few things there that might give us a guidance. And if you are really honest with yourself, most of us would be standing at most of these things that I would mention. First of all, pride refuses to listen. It always interrupts others. Have you been in discussions like that? Where you are yeah. talking with the know-all. I mean, they, they just know more than anybody else about everything. It doesn't matter what it is. Uh, you would yeah. still be talking, but they want to make themselves to be heard over everybody else. We need to guard against that. You see, there's, there's wisdom in listening. And then finally, after the last sentence, and you can now recap everything that's been said. Otherwise, you foolishly answer in the middle of of a sentence yeah it's gonna now that's pride once that's pride the second part or second one that came to my mind was pride cannot be corrected how many yeah. people you yeah. know that way nice. you nice. cannot tell them anything they know the best and when they make a mistake they find a way to I make mean, the mistake no. look positive <laughs> it's all planned you guys are here, this is part of pride because they don't want to acknowledge that they were wrong. And I find very often when, when I do acknowledge when I've made a mistake, I can build upon that. But a person that don't acknowledge mistakes, they don't grow. So I thank the Lord for the time in ministry. Many times I've made statements from the pulpit as a young minister. And I thought that was exactly what the word of God says, just to learn a few years on that never make a statement that closes the door because God builds precept upon precept. You don't go and live in a house once you put one brick down and say, now I'm in my house. Well, you, you still got a choice which side of the brick you're going to live. Hey, eh? that's not the way it works it is when you finish the building. That is important. Pride has an intense desire to be noticed. How often have you seen that? I can say it louder than you. Or I can do something so that the attention comes to me. Celia did so well in the last week. But if it wasn't for me, you get the idea? There's a compliment there, but I just want to chuck this in. It was actually me doing it. Yeah. Now that's pride. Or having to change the things in the direction that you wanted. 
Pride criticizes and tries to make itself look better by putting others down. How often have you seen that happen? Pride does not like to follow instructions. Hard-headedness, they call it. And they very often say it's good quality if people can hold on to what they, that's a good quality if it's the right thing. Make sure what you hold on to is the rock. Then it will make a difference. The second point, prayerlessness. So pride, God hates pride. Prayerlessness. In other words, the, the lack of speaking to God. Prayer looks to God and says, I can't, but you can. This is why we pray. When we pray for, for people and we ask the Lord to intervene in a situation, it's easy to pray the desire of our heart. It's easy to do that. I want to do the best for my kids. But the best in my book might not be the best for them in the end. So I need to ask someone that knows the end from the beginning. And that's God. So don't pray after the desires of your heart. Get to speak to God first so that you can get to know his heart. Very important. Praise, I can't, but you can. James 4, verse 3. You ask and receive not, because you ask amiss. You ask the wrong thing, the wrong way. That you may consume it upon your own lusts. In other words, I pray after the desire of my heart. And now, in this instance, the Bible says, the Holy Spirit wants to warn us about this. The things that I ask, I want the best job place for my grandchild, argument's sake. But is it the best in the long run? God knows. So we need to search after what God wants. If you want to do some research, this guy, Leonard Ravenhill, he makes a statement. He says, the church is dying on its feet because it is not living on its knees. What an amazing statement. And I look around and we see that people are dying. So-called Christians are dying on their feet. There's a coldness coming into church. That relationship with the Lord where we can just get busy with God instead of on a getting busy with a program seems to, the gap seems to widen up. We go out from this church and we say, well, we had a good praise and worship time, but the sermon, well, I'm not too sure. Or the other way around. So what did you come for? To be catered to? Or to come and bring glory and honor to God? If we have no singing and just praying, would you be satisfied with that? Or just preaching and, and no singing and no praying, would you be satisfied with that? You see, each one of us have a different way of looking at things. But we've got to find God's way. That is where satisfaction comes in. You know, the greatest joy for me would be to see the power of the Holy Spirit just poured out upon us, where we emotionally are just overrun by His presence. But we've been so hardened in our heart with an expectancy of what needs to be done. When Moses went up that mountain to fetch the tablets, the discord in the camp were just impossible <laughs> because they couldn't believe he could be up there for this long. And what's going to happen now? Well, they knew that he went to meet. He had a relationship with God all that time. They saw all the miracles, yet they did not believe. They ate. Their clothes didn't wear. All these things happened, and yet they did not believe. Prayerlessness. This guy, Leonard Ravenhill, 
He was one of the, 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 the mentors also of uh, some great ministers uh, in the state as well. Uh, David Wilkinson was one of the guys that, that came to know the Lord and be trained up under this ministry. You know what that entailed. There's many others of these great uh, men of God uh, that was trained up by him or latched on to the teaching in this way of, of doing teaching. So if you want to uh, find something great to read, that that is always something good to do. Then the third point, not having God as number one in your life. So in other words, self-centeredness, that automatically pride puts yourself as number one. The second one, prayerlessness. The third one that opens the door to the enemy, not having God as number one. You see, God's people are told to seek his face. It is not just going to happen. You've got to put the effort in. Seek his face. Look for him. Get closer to him. Seeking his face means that we hunger for him more than for what he can do. And I think this is the important nuance, the, first, the difference there. It is not about what he can do for me, it's what I can do for him. He's already done me such a great favor that I am saved. Seeking his face means that we hunger for him. The Bible says to us in Matthew 6, 33, Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these things will be added unto you. Get this. Seek first kingdom, rulership, righteousness, right alignment with his plan, his will. And then once you achieve that, God says, I will supply in every need you have. You know, God is so good, he even supplies in our desires. But get your priorities right. Get into the bunker of his safety. What is it that we do and say over the course of the week or whenever that influences people negatively? In other words, you know what I've found? You can do a hundred things good and well. And you need to do one thing bad. And guess what? That's all they see. All the good things you've ever done is out the window. No wonder God wants us to be tuned in so that the Holy Spirit can warn us. You get uptight in front of someone after you've made your declaration that I'm a child of God. Here's what happens. They just don't believe you. Not anymore anyway. Why should I believe him if he can't hold on tight on in his beliefs? This is why to use an excuse for anything negative to happen, just don't bear. There's no security in that. We need to get to that place of saying, Lord, I'm sorry I failed. But I want to pray, Lord, that you keep me from failing. Show me. And I keep on saying, be slow to speak, because it's in that that we very often show off anger or irritation or what it might ever be. We need to be careful. The word of God says to us in James 4, verse 8. He says, draw near to God. And guess what? He will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. This is a scripture that you might want to go and have a look. Dissect it. Cut it up in pieces. And use one piece at a time and explain it to yourself what you understand I, I find that that's the only way to learn the bible to take a scripture cut it up in pieces and then decide what is it saying to me and after i know that that's why i always say to the young people write down the verse and then the words your definition next to it and then you go back and you read all your definitions because that way it'll just sink in and it also helps you to do some Bible study. It's not this very three, four minutes quickly through the Bible. Can't even remember half an hour later what you've read. 
or whether it's made any impact. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Clench your hands, you sinners. In other words, he says, get done with the sin. What is sin? Missing the mark. This is what sin is. So sin is not what you do wrong. It is actually what you don't do right. And you can say what you want. There's a difference between those two statements I just made. Go and think about it. If you really want to know what your priorities are today, then ask yourself these questions. I'm going to have you to answer two questions, really. The first one just says, on what activity do I spend most of my time? And listen, I'm not on about being in workplace. But that extra time that you have on hand, what is it that you think about? Are you planning your next holiday and it keeps you busy for the next two weeks and just planning your holiday, forgetting to plan it in tandem with what God wants for you? Because I'm not going on holiday because I just need to relax. I believe God wants to, He wants to relax me when I go on holiday. But He also wants to give me, charge me spiritually. And by doing things, helping people, Speaking to someone, just sowing the seed, builds me up spiritually. The second one is, on what do I focus my thoughts? When you came into this building today for fellowship, what was it that filled your mind? All the what I need to do, or oh Lord, here I am. I can't wait for the meeting to start because I want a visitation. I wonder if I, we are honest today with one another. And I would have asked you to say, who of you have actually asked for God's visitation today? I wonder how many hands will go up. And I'm not judgmental now. I'm just trying to focus our mind where it needs to be. I'm coming. I want to come to serve the Lord. The last point I want to highlight there. Not making sure that in all I do to please God, so having God is number one in my heart. Forgetting selflessness, pride, and all these, prayerlessness, but also getting to that place. My weakness is not making sure. I'm on the negative here. Not making sure that in all I do, I am pleasing God. If you want to be righteous, the first question in doing anything is, will, will God be pleased by this. So, whoa, that's going to take me some time to get through my day. <laughs> no, not really. Because the Holy Spirit can give you in one instant, in, in a moment's time, He can give you that sense, peace or not. If you trust in Him. If you trust in Him. God's people are told to turn from their wicked, wicked ways. ways. Forsake their sin and embrace holiness. This is important. Holiness. If you embrace holiness, righteousness, sin will automatically be shunned away from you. But you cannot get holy unless you get closer to God. It's impossible. Man cannot become holy. It is God that cleanses us. So we need to get closer. Begin to put me aside. I become less, he become more. I want to seek your will, Lord, for my life. Then I know everything will work as it should. Sin keeps us out of the presence of the Lord. Think about it. No wonder we are sometimes as weak as we are. Isaiah 59 verse 2 says, but, uh, it's always sad when I, in the center starts with this, isn't it? It it means you could have had something good, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid your face from his face from you, that he will not hear. So you you pray, you pray in vain if you do not have a relationship with the Lord. There's only one prayer that God listens to, I believe, firmly believe, of the non-believer. 
And that is the prayer calling on him to be saved. That's the prayer that he listens to. Because prayer should be built from a relationship. What I cannot do, I know God can. So in other words, but your iniquities is separated between you and your God. You ask, why is things not working out in a way? Why have I got this dryness spiritually that I seem not to be able to get through the ceiling? It seems like I'm caught up in things. I just cannot break through. When last have you sensed the presence of the Holy Spirit when you were praying, seeking after his faith? Well, the answer is in this. The iniquities, our unrighteousness has made a divide between us and God. But here's some good news. God wants us to, or rather he wants us to be secured in the bunker of his safety. We have been hindered in being safe in the bunker of blessing by what the enemy has been doing. And this is why I believe this scripture, 2 uh, Chronicles 7, 14, is so very important. Now, see what I've done with this. Because this is what I would want you to do with scriptures. It's a starting point. If my own people, that's what God says. Now, in my mind, I say it, when my ambassadors, this is what he says, I'm his people, so I'm his ambassador, ambassador of the Messiah on this earth. You can build around that whole ambassador thing so much more. Will humbly, in other words, will let go of pride. Let go of, I know everything. I don't need guidance. I don't need to be led. Because listen, you're not saying it to people. You're saying it to God. You know what? God will allow you to bump your head. Because you won't listen anyway. Will let go of pride. Then he says, pray. In other words, communicate with me. So I've, when my ambassadors will let go of pride and communicate with me. You get the idea? And turn back to me. The word repent. In other words, you cannot repent unless you realize you're aiming in the wrong direction. Because repent means 180 degree turn. Going in the opposite way than what you go. How do you know you're wrong unless you know you're wrong? You get what I'm saying? You got to know that you are doing the wrong thing. And by doing that, I decide to turn around. How do I know I do the wrong thing? When I humbly come to the Lord, he shows me I'm wrong. All in this one scripture. And stop sinning. In other words, to start walking in righteousness. Begin to seek the plan and the will of God in my life. To be righteous means to be aligned, right aligned. In other words, God set the standard and I need to live according to his standard, not mine. You know what is amusing but very sad nowadays? The one big question that's now been asked is to find the word woman. It has become such a hot potato that people in governments can't handle it when you confront them with a simple question define a woman they cannot then someone got confronted by this why can't you say yeah but everybody that says they a woman are now all of a sudden a woman so it's not about what you were born, it is now what you believe. So the guy made a statement. He says, all right, I'm a white guy, bearded. From this moment on, I'm a black woman. You dare not say anything against me because I will be offended. So he asked the guy, how can you make that kind of statement? 
My truth and your truth is not the same. There's only one truth. That's God's truth. You see, when we become get to a place of doing our own thing, everything seems to go south. Nothing works out. I believe God wants to encourage us. Stop sinning. Walk in righteousness. What the word says is true. Then I will answer them from heaven. Then will they be ready to receive revelation. You get that? So once we come into righteousness, you need to be a vessel that's been cleaned out. Because God has some precious and pure perfume to put into the vessel. You cannot get the revelation unless your vessel is clean. People say, why is it this? Some people can sit with the scriptures and it opens up. It is meant for each one of us. Because the Holy Spirit wants to give to all of us. It depends on you, the cleanliness of your vessel. And what Portia had said about fasting. I should minister again, I suppose, on fasting. But here's the important thing. The word never says, if you fast. Bible says in, in Matthew very clearly, it says when you fast. So there's an expectancy with God that we will be fasting. Because at that point of fasting is very important. I'm not going to go say more than that. Just that let's get fasting. And then he goes on to say, I will forgive them. I will answer them from heaven. And I will forgive them. In other words, God will give us with the revelation the ability to know that the weight of guilt has been removed. So when I come and say, Lord, forgive me. I've been lackluster in my spiritual life. I've been prayerless. I've been proud. I haven't made you number one. I've deliberately, Lord, not focused on things that pleases you, but just did things in, on impulse. I come to ask for forgiveness. And then the scripture says, I will forgive them. Take away the weight of guilt. Because if you feel guilty, it is hardly it's hardly possible to be able to speak to God. Because the enemy will continually tap you on the shoulder. You haven't sought that out. Do you really think God's going to listen to you? Now, when that happens, speak to God immediately. Lord, I want to be forgiven of this. I want to clear the way, the airway. And then the last, and make their land fertile once again. In other words, my blessing on all of their labor. So when my ambassadors will let go of pride, communicate with me, repent and walk in righteousness, then will they be ready to receive revelation and they will experience the weight of guilt removed. And my blessing will be upon their labor. It's the same verse. When we begin to do these kind of things, that's when you begin to grow spiritually. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord, a recognition that he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords, is my ownership. I'm part of his flock. I want to guide. Follow his lead. Shepherd, what does a shepherd do? Leads me. He looks after me, protects me. See how many things you get in a small little three, four words, just by dissecting the scriptures. It is important that each one of us investigate the scriptures ourselves. So do we then say this, secure the bunker. Get pride out your way. Prayerlessness out of your way. Make God number one and seek him in all of your ways. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Father, we're so thankful that your Holy Spirit quietly speaks to us. And Lord, I pray that we would have been 
in a very positive way been reprimanded that we spend too little time in aligning ourselves in order to receive revelation lord and father we cannot survive unless we have revelation unless we have the holy spirit to speak into our life and the giftings begin to operate in and through us for the sake of extending your kingdom for lord we will never be satisfied by anything on this earth until lord we are completely holding on to you and your name be glorified in and through our life i pray father that the seed of this word would not be stealing, stolen by the enemy that it would be in safe places in the deepest recess of our heart where the holy spirit will begin to make it to grow so that it might bear fruit and we'd be able lord to be what you have purposed us to be from the beginning of time and i thank you father for the encouragement may your name be glorified and lifted even after we leave and depart from this place that we always will hold you as our guide in front of us lord so that we will follow through in safety we pray this in the wonderful name of yeshua our savior and lord